Hi there everyone, my name is Willem de Koning and in this video we will go through the tutorial for detection of antibiotic resistance gene with the use of nanopore sequencing data. In this tutorial we will use the nanopore.usegalaxy.eu to do to perform all the steps because in this uh, specific website of Use Galaxy all the tools are available for uh, the nanopore sequencing analysis and uh, but you are free to use your own instance and also all the tools are available on usegalaxy.eu so first i will open the tutorial which you can find here this is the starting page that you will start on and for this specific tutorial you have to go to metagenomics and here you find the antibiotic resistance detection. And we, as you can see, we will use nanopore data and we will see some plasmids. So in this video, I, I will go through the, this tutorial. There are some questions that we are going to try to answer. How do I assemble a genome with nanopore data? How do I get more information about the structure of genomes? How do I get more information about the antimicrobial resistant genes? And to get this answer, we will perform some specific steps. We will perform a quality control on the reads. Uh, we will assemble a genome with Minimap, Mini, SM, and Rakan. We will determine the structure of the genome. And we will scan for antimicrobial resistance genes with star AMR. That are the main objectives. And there will be some small extra steps that you will see throughout this tutorial. So here you can find the introduction, but feel free to read it through it by yourself. Uh, I won't go through it for now. I just want to point out that we are using uh, for this tutorial data from Lee et al. And you can find the publication by clicking the link. And in this tutorial, we will go through the workflow and we will start with the nanopore sequencing data. Here you can see all the steps that I have just described in the objectives. And here you can see the last part that we will do. We will do some antimicrobial resistant gene detection. We predict whether it's a plasmid. Uh, we will visual, do some visualization and we will show some quality control reports that you can create. So the first step is to obtain the data that we will use. And for that, we will import it into the galaxy. So first you start by creating a new history, which I will do uh, soon. And then we will import the sample data. So for that, we will copy the links here. And we will import them into the new history. So we create a new history. We can, I will call it AMR. In this case, we will do antimicrobial uh, resistance and then we will upload the files by clicking this specific button and here you can paste and fetch the links that we have just copied from the tutorial so here you have a box and you fill the links in and you can press start and then the files will start to upload What we will do in this tutorial is that because we will have to perform some of the steps every time on each of the files, we will create a data collection. And you can do that by clicking this button, operations on multiple data sets. By that, you see these boxes showing up where you can select the data, the data sets that you want to put into the collection. And you can select them one by one, or you can just select them all at once. And then what you would like to do is for all that you have selected, we want to build a data set list. Here you can see all the files that we have just selected. Uh, you can still discard them and we will give it a name in this case. I will call it plasmid. And we create a list. 
So when and when these files are uploaded, we will go to the next step. While these files are being uploaded, I will show the starting page of the Nanopore Use Galaxy, where you can find some of the tools and you can find some tutorials, you can find some workflows. So this Nanopore Use Galaxy EU is a specific uh, galaxy for Nanopore sequence uh, analysis. And here you can see the, some of the tools that we have uh, imported into this nanopore.us galaxy.eu. You can find some polishing quality control and processing tools like port chop, port and field long. You can find genome assembly like Minimap Miniasm and Fly. Some visualization tool like Nanoplot and Bandits. And then there are some taxonomy and metagenomics tools like Blasphor, Star, AMR and Kraken2. Now, today we are going through the tutorial on antimicrobial resistance, but here you can find the training website where you can find more of the trainings on the Galaxy. Here you can find some pre-made uh, workflows that you can use to run your analysis. If you are interested in, for example, a basic workflow with the Nanopolis tutorials, you can find it here and you can find the history of an already run workflow. So in the meanwhile, the files have been uploaded and we will go through the, to the next step. And the next step is quality control. So what you would like to do is when you get sequence data, you want to check whether the quality is actually sufficient to go to the data analysis part. Uh, for this, there is a tutorial uh, on quality control on the Galaxy website as well. In this case, in our case, we just uploaded FASTA files. And that means that we don't know anything about the quality of each nucleotide in the files. And therefore, there is not much to do anymore in quality control. But I still would like to show you the option of Nanoplot to show uh, what it does and that you can see at least the distribution of the length of your sequences and to see whether that is what do you expect? So for that, we will use Nanoplot. And when you go through the tutorial in by clicking this button, we can actually click on the tools and we will be directed to them. So when we click here, we go to the Nanoplot uh, tool page. And here we will have to select multiple options. So First of all, we will select the batch. There is also the option to combine. The difference is that when we use batch, all the reports or in all the files are going to create it for each of the input files separately, where if you use the combined option, you will get one report and one uh, histogram, for example, for all the FASTA files combined. So in our case, we would like to have the batch so we can see for each of the files separately. So if there is a FASTA file that we think is uh, containing too many short reads, we can see it separately. So with which type of files are we working on? We are working on FASTA in our case, and then we have to select which files are we going to use. And in our case, we just created a data collection. So here you see the data collection uh, button and we will select plasmids the one or the data set that you have just created when that's done we can execute you can see that the execution has started there are six jobs generated for each of the the output and that corresponds to this the six fasta files that are part of our collection. And this will take a bit, so I will come back to you when it, the files are processed. So welcome back. The output has been generated. I will, I will go through the HTML report for now, but feel free to click through the other outputs. So within the newly created collection, the HTML reports of the six FASTA files, we can view one of them. In this case, I will look at the 
RB01 FASTAR HTML report. And here you can see some of the basic statistics. So the mean read length, the median read length, the number of reads, et cetera, et cetera. And this is also viewed within histograms uh, throughout the HTML report. Uh, this is very useful if you have your own experiment and you want to see whether your sequencer actually created long reads or it didn't. What kind of uh, reads do I have in my files? Um, so now that it, this is done, and maybe in your case, you will go to more quality control because you have your fast Q files. Um, we are ready for the next step and the next step will be to do alignment and for that we will use minimap2 and uh, the parameters are also explained here but i will go through them with you for now so we go to the two uh, minimap which you can find like that and what we are going to do now is we are going to map the reads from our FASTA files to itself. So uh, if we have RB01, we will try to map the reads that are in that file to each other so we can build upon uh, the reads that we are having. So kind of extending the reads by mapping it to each other. And for that, we will choose uh some of the parameters here so we'll you we select a reference genome you can use a, a reference genome if you just want to do mapping with as i just explained we want to use our own uh, genome so here we select use a genome from history and build index uh, here we want to use our collection that we have created in the beginning which is plasmids indeed then we have to select whether it's single or paired entries. So in the nanopore case, it will be single entries, but for Illumina, you might want to choose for um, paired entries. And then we have to select a fast queue data set. Again, we will select the plasmids. So now you see that we have selected the plasmids twice because we want to map it to each other. And then a profile for preset options. In this case, the, some of the more advanced options are uh, predefined. And in our case, we will use the Oxford Nanopore all versus all overlap mapping because that is exactly what, what we would like to do. We want to overlap our Oxford Nanopore uh, reads. And here you can see the options that are used while doing that. So you click that. And because we want to use a miniasm afterwards, we will need an output called puff. And uh, therefore, we have to go to the set advanced output options. And we want to select the output form, puff. And then we are ready to execute. So something nice from Galaxy, in my opinion, is that now that we have mapped with Miniasm, there are some, with Minimap, there are some recommendations for tools to use afterwards. So I think Reckon is, for example, a very good uh, suggestion. We won't use it now directly, but later on you will see that we will actually use it after the Map with Minimap step. So uh, meanwhile, the mapping is performing and I will come back to you when that is finished. And the mapping step is done. So uh, now we have the output from Minimap and we will have a look at it. Here you can, I will again show the RB01, but feel free to look at the others. Here you can see the output, which is the so-called puff file and 
it is a tab separated file where we have some information on the query string, the query sequence length, the start and the end position, the relative strength and the read that it has mapped to. Um, and then more information about the other mapped read. And this data files we will use to go to the next step, which is the assembly step. So again, we will go back to the tutorial. We have done, we have gone through the uploading. We have looked at the quality. We did the pairwise alignment using Minimap. And now it's time to do the assembly. So now we, what we would like to do is we try to assemble the overlapped reads that we have just created with Minimap. So what we will do, we will use mini, Miniasm and that is open like that. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to select our sequence reads, which is not a separate file, but our data collection again, plasmids. Uh, these are the original reads that we have used. And then we have to select our path files, which you can do by selecting this. And then we want to have the output of a minimap in this case, map with minimap across collection 13. For the rest, we will leave the options as it is and we will start executing. And we will see back. So again, mini SMS running, and I will come back to you when that's done. So now that the mini SM is done, we can uh, look at the output again. And we have some GFA called uh, output, which is an assembly graph. But we aren't finished yet because what we would like to do is we want to still improve our overall assembly, our overall context. So what we want to do is we want to rerun the minimap stem once again, um, but because Minimap cannot use the output from MiniSM, we will transform this GFA uh, files back to FASTA. And this we can do with the following tool. As you can see here. And we have to choose our input files, which is the mini SM output. So again, we click a data set collection and indeed we use the mini SM uh, output, the assembly graphs and we execute. When that is done, we are going to perform uh, again, mini map. And I will, I will just continue with the next step because that is also something nice that you can do in Galaxy is that while your previous st step is still running, you can already start your next step. So we will uh, open Minimap 2 again. This time I will use the search option of Galaxy. And this is then the tool that we want to use uh, again. And I will go through the options. Uh, in this case, we want to again use a genome from the history and build index, but and we still want to use a data set collection, but instead of using the original plasmids, this time we want to use the FASTA files that have just been created with GFA to FASTA. Then the single apart and it stays single end and this time we don't want to map it to our to itself but this time we want to map it to the previous to the original plasmid sets and for this for the next step so for improving we use a slightly uh, different uh, preset options in this case we will use the Back bio Oxford nanopore read to reference mapping. 
and again because we want to uh, use buff as output we will set the output format to buff and that is it then it's ready to run when this step is finished uh, the again the mapping what we have done is we have mapped and assembled all the reads but what we would like to do if there is a there are multiple nucleotides possible on one position. We would like to clean them up. We want to make one consensus. And for that, we will use Reckon, which is a, is this, uh, so to say, cleaner up uh, the consensus module where you can uh, create this one consensus in the end. So we will use Reckon. Here you can see Reckon, a consensus model for raw de novo assembly of long uncorrected reads. So that is exactly what I just described and what we want to do. Then for the sequences, we want to use the original plasmids. For the overlap that we have just created, is going to be the path files from the newest minimap run and the target sequencing target sequences are the ones that are created uh, with gfa to fasta so the the file that came out of miniism basically but that we have transformed formats from gfa to fasta And then we are ready to run, execute. So by doing, by using these three tools, Minimap 2, MiniSM and Raccoon, all we have tried to do is to go from separate sequences to one assembly and a cleaned up uh, assembly, something that we trust. And what we then would like to do is we want to visualize what have we created. And for that, we will use bandits. So to go over it once again, is we have obtained the prepare and prepared the data, we have imported, we use nanoplot to look at some of the uh, properties of our sequences. We did the alignment using minimap, we did the assembly using miniism, we did the remapping again with minimap. And then we use the consensus model reckon to clean up our consensus. And now we want to visualize the assemblies using bandits. And for that, we will use the bandits image option. And here, we want to use as input the assembly graphs created with miniism. And therefore, we don't select the separate pass about, but we still want to select a, a, a collection. But we here we can't use FASTA files. So we need to have the assembly graphs files that are exported by miniism. And for now, we will leave the parameters like it is, but you can change the image and the height, the, the image height and the width of the image. You can add some uh, labels, you can add the, change the font size or the uh, file type that we have. And then we press execute. And when this is done, I will show you the output of one of the bandits images that we have. So now the bandits, uh, bandits is ready and we will look at one of the outputs. And this is what it is. Well, <laughs> what can we see? Mm, this might be maybe a plasmid. This can be some chromosomes, but actually we are not that sure. And that might be because we have gone through the whole process only once, but maybe you want to do actually even more steps of going from minimap 
to Minism, to Reckon, and, and so on, and so on. Uh, and actually, this uh, is wrapped up in a tool called Unicycling. And so the next step that we will take is we will run Unicycling on our uh, original input uh, files. And therefore, we will use the tool Unicycling, uh, which we can find like that. Uni cycle. create assemblies with unicycle. So here again we are in the option uh, option sections of unicycle. And what we would like to do is for the paired or single end data, we select none because we don't have that. And for the long reads, that is where we are going to select our original FASTA files. So here we select the plasmids, data collection, plasmids, and the rest of the options we will leave uh, as it is. And so again, what Unicycler does it is repeating the steps that we have just taken one by one. And so this is what we'll use Unicycler for. And Unicycler has a couple of other advantages. It is uh, specifically made for circular DNA. Uh, it will do multiple rounds of the improvements, uh, improvement of the sequence accuracy. So the steps of Minimap, Mini SMN, and Rackham. And it will even rotate the uh, sequences over and over again uh, to get your uh, most polished uh, output. And so we have selected all the options and we can press execute. And when that is done, we will create again the, uh, the image of the output with the bandits image and we will compare them. So what we want to do is we want to run again a bandits image. And this time we would like to input the output of a unicycle, the final assembly graph output. So here we will select the data set collection and we don't want the final assembly, but we want the final assembly graph. The rest of the options we will leave as it is and we will press execute. So now you can really see that the bandits image uh, tool has been queued and it will start running as soon as Unicycler is finished. And But this will take a while, so I will come back to you when that is done. So now that that is finished, we uh, would like to look at the images again and see whether we see a difference. So I will open the one again for RB01 and view the data. So now I think you can see that there is definitely a huge difference with the previous one. Here you can see uh, two clear plasmids and maybe one chromosome and some leftover. Uh, but what we actually would like to do is compare them. And for that, there is an option in Galaxy to open multiple uh, data sets at once. And therefore we will use this, the scratch book. Uh, we will enable it. And then we want to view our data and we can resize it. And we go back. And we want to do the same for the previously made uh, uh, output. And we can actually search for our bandage output and search. And here you can see the previous created output. And we open it. And then we want to view the data also from RB0. And so now you can see the two uh, 
different outputs next to each other. You see, so on the left side, you see the output from our men steps that we have taken manual, and you can see this maybe plasmid and some chromosomes. But when you use unicycler uh, for the for all the steps, it often is optimized to detect plasmids and chromosomes, and so this has a way more clear output and more likely to be correct. So here you have two plasmids, one chromosome and some leftover. And here you have uh, some blob that might be a plasmid, but it isn't very polished. And some long strings, which might be actually a plasmid. So uh, for this, you can use the scratch book to view multiple uh, images or output in the same time. I will turn off the scratch book. So when we want to look at the output, we can do it one by one. And so now that we have decided that we have a good output, something that looks good, actually, uh, we want to find out, uh, is it really what we think it is? So for that, we will use plus flow which predicts whether a sequence is a plasmid sequence or a chromosomal uh, DNA. And it does that by a model that is trained on full genome and plasmid sequences. And they claim that they can differentiate between plasmids and chromosomes with the accuracy of reaching 96%. So that is pretty good. Uh, so we will open the tool flash flow. Like that. And we want to select our uh, final assembly created with unicycler. And then it's ready to execute. And what we will look at when this is finished is whether uh, certain contexts are classified uh, either as plasmids or as chromosomes. And so this is actually another confirmation whether what you have find, found is actually a plasmid or not. And plus flow will take a while to run. So uh, I will come back to you when it's finished. And you can get a coffee or something to drink, maybe if you want to take a break now. So welcome back. Uh, we, I will show you the output now of uh, plus flow. And specifically, I will show the probability table that it has created. And again, I would like to look at RB01. And when you view the data, you get this uh, table corresponding to the for uh, parts in the image that we have just seen. So you can remember there was one uh, chromosome-like structure and there were two uh, circles which could indicate a plasmid and there was some left over. And actually, when we use plus flow, it says that all, all four uh, all four sequences are likely to be a plasmid. So it, it is possible that we couldn't reconstruct the correct plasmids in all cases, but at least in two of the cases, yes. And you can see that it classifies it as a, a proteobacteria to be most likely. And this is all pro all the probabilities that it belongs to, uh, for example, a plasmid belonging to uh, Firmicytes or some other. And there is also a possibility that it is a chromosome belonging to this. So that is how you interpret the output of plus flow. Now, uh, now it's finally time to look at whether there are antimicrobial resistant genes 
uh, on these plasmids that we have found. And for that, we will use star AMR. And star AMR is a tool to detect antimicrobial resistance gene, and it uses that, and it uses a rest finder, point finder, and plasmid finder uh, to do so. So we will search for star AMR. There it is. Uh, we want to again uh, upload our output from uh, Unicycler, but you can also choose to only uh, upload the plasmids or the chromosomes that you have identified with Plasflow. and then we execute and so uh, star amr is trying to detect the antimicrobial resistant genes by using rest finder point finder and plasmid finder and it creates multiple outputs um, which are described in the tutorial but i think for now what is most interesting is going to be the rest finder output the tsv which state the different genes that are present. So here we will open the output. And here we can see uh, per input contact, the gene that uh, has been identified. When you have found one of these genes, for example, uh, DFRA12, you can go to the CART database, which is a database uh, with all information about uh, antimicrobial resistance genes. So here you see CART and you see it is a comprehensive antibiotic resistance database. And you can search for the gene that we have just found and it will give you all the information about it and feel free to go through the information that you find here per gene on your own time in your own time uh, it will describe some resistance mechanism as well and so this is this is going from your input sequences to some findings and that is the tutorial i would uh, like to end with a small summary uh, so let's go back to the tutorial and go to the conclusions so uh, as i have shown we have uh, gone through the process of mapping uh, assembly remapping and making a consensus module. And, but I have also shown you that there are, is a specialized tool for doing these steps automatically by using Unicycler. And that improved the outcome quite a lot. Nevertheless, I think it is important to understand which steps are taken in a tool like Unicycler and that maybe you would like to uh, change some of the tools for example instead of using mini as in nowadays fly is another used tool for the assembly step and so you could change your your workflow based on what you think is most fitting to your data and when we have come to a consensus sequence we have scanned for resistance genes using star amr and uh, we have predict whether it's a plasma is if it is really a plasmid sequence using plasflow. Um, then uh, on the galaxy side, I have shown you how you can use collections, how you can run uh, multiple files all at once. And we have looked at the scratch book where you can view multiple outputs at the same time next to each other. I think if that are the 
key, key points used on the Galaxy side. And with that, I would like to conclude this tutorial. And I just wanted to point you out that actually on the Nano Galaxy part, we have also published a paper describing uh, some of the workflows that we are using, a use case, and uh, some of the tools that we are using here. And you can find it uh, by going to the Nano Galaxy uh, publication. So this is the article I'm referring to, Nano Galaxy, Nano for long read sequencing data analysis in the Galaxy. And it will explain a bit more about the workflows that we have put in and some of the tools that we have added, et cetera, et cetera. That's it. Thank you for listening. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it.